Right, try that again. So just uh, waiting for Max doing a little few car things. So just we'll wander around a little bit. A lot of the architectures in these buildings, that's the Forest Art Gallery right in front of us. Amazing, really good exhibitions and a good selection. I mean, you've got local artists here, Bill Bailey, Donna Demente, not Bill Bailey, the... the <laughs> The Black Books, but another Bill Bailey. Um, Donna Demente, you've got, uh, God only did the cover of this particular magazine, the amazing Dean Raymond. Um, in fact, there's just you know, a glorious artist to, 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 for Africa, for the Omaru. A lot of the architecture was, um, I mean, let's look at it, you, can, you probably can't see it from here, but on the top of that uh, particular clock tower, which is sort of the local council building, the beautiful lines and sort of, not quite gargoyles, but the sort of some really elaborate trappings in the buildings, which you just don't see in modern architecture today. A lot of the architects of this area were, um, I think, that, for example, that church is Lawson. Lawson was one of the great architects of this area. And when Omaru was, you know, first actually founded, what I think a lot of people don't necessarily appreciate about this place is that it was founded in a period where the age of coal was on the way out and the age of steam was actually on the way in. Uh, so, for example, if you went that way, up the beautiful rose, there is, by the way, a very beautiful rose garden around the corner from the RSAA. Uh, again, another one of these amazing little, uh, these little, 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 uh, Memorial monuments to various characters. This is actually memory of George Jones, 1844 to 1920. Justum et tenacem Justice of something. I'm going to have to get that one translated. My Latin's pretty bloody rusty these days. Uh, and again, some of these great houses. So, aside from the the fact that at the time was, this was a little place that was a little bit like a kind of a, a, a miniature Silicon Valley for its area. So, if you went up that way approximately travelled about an hour and a half you get to Timaru that's sort of uh, the home of Richard Pearce who's the first New Zealand powered aviator it's widely regarded that uh, Pearce actually um, managed to get powered flight aviation uh, at least a couple of years before the Wright brothers there is film footage apparently um, so it's sort of another one of those things which has never been quite nailed down but uh, pro pre most people are pretty confident that actually that, that's actually what went on um, you went the other direction you go to Totra State which is approximately about uh, so let's say 20 minutes out of Omaru. Um, this is one of the places where they actually first found out they were able to uh, invent refrigeration, which meant that you could suddenly export meat to the other side of the world. And it made a lot of farmers very, very rich. Uh, so, you know, this area had this sort of history of natural innovation and development. So you even have the kind of the cases of, I mean, again, look at that amazing, staggering architecture right up there. Try not to get run over. Never a good thing with the locals. Um, so Totra State, so Totra State. Uh, oh, actually, also the connection here is to um, Scott of Antarctica when his body was being brought back uh, from Antarctica. He actually, it's, it's actually, he basically arrived first in Omaru, and that's how New Zealand found out that uh, Scott and his crew had been um, demised in Antarctica. So, really beautiful little town. Um, I'm just going to walk around, see how far we can actually get into the precinct before Max catches up with me. So there's the sort of the precinct and it's kind of got a lot of a connection to artisans of Victoriana. You've got craft works with, uh, I just call him the book by name, his lovely, mo lovely mother. And then you have the grain store gallery, which is Donna Demente, the good little bakery in there. You know, nice little, little um, art gallery called Ro Robos, which makes it a really kind of like funky little sort of avant-garde and this art and time. Even at place the well store, um, this really great little section of little miniature artisans up the top there. Good little cafe down the bottom and a sort of little kind of cool little gift shop run by my friends, uh, Carol. In fact, there's another one of my friends, Starring Garda Restaurant, that's Lisa. Um, that's pretty much one of the oldest restaurants actually in New Zealand, continuously restaurants. And you make your way, as you do. This is what I really wanted to show off. This little bit of the, sort of the, the sadder side of the steampunk in Omaru is it has kind of moved to being kind of a bit, you know, they call themselves the steampunk capital of New Zealand. They really miss an opportunity. So, you know, all this sort of talking about the local history, uh, you know, it would have been in some ways quite ha accurate to call it them the steampunk capital of the world it's in terms of, you know, that history which I just unfolded to you. Uh, again, these amazing little, you can catch these trains that are quite often, quite often you know, running during the festival days and so on. But there was, you know, there were come bits about with steampunk, which they have actually embraced and put their own spin on it, which is what we're going to actually have a look over here. And I've actually seen this, this monster stuck out of the middle of the road where we just walked before the main street there, all lit up firing and belching fire and smoke and it's quite incredible um the one of the guys the designers on this is chris meader 
And Chris Smeader is actually, you know, they always used to say, well, you want to find Chris, so he, he did most of the art department and things, the wetter workshop, they tell you, go look for the yellow ute with a concrete cement uh, on the pack. And Chris's little trick in life was basically loading things up as much as he could and going as fast as he could and had caused as many explosions as he could. Um, and so, yeah, unfortunately, uh, he passed away at a um, sort of very aggressive form of leukemia a few years ago. And uh, he's not long with us anymore, but he's, I consider him to be one of the most under valued and unappreciated artist within uh, you know, New Zealand's art scene, which is kind of crazy because I said like, he pretty much was a very significant part of Weta Workshop, amazing little character scene. There is a great storyline, I have been told, I can't remember it, but again there's got the, the great ear blimps, hello! <laughs> and uh, the time machine if you should so need, the need to get a, a, away from it. Again all these little kind of cool little gadgets, just put a couple of bucks in there and you get a, like a little present surprise, which I'm not going to show you because uh, I can't give away all the cool things. Just have another look at these guys here. Oh, oh, oh. that's what I'm calling, now that's steampunk. And da -da -da. So these are these amazing crowds. I think I'm just trying to remember the Danny, 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 I'm trying to remember Danny's name. Who was the, um, you Chris Meter, and who was the guy that did all the sculptures, Danny? Yeah, and then there was the guy that worked with him, the, the, um, who also drove a black ute and, and uh, had his little shop just over there. Oh, I don't know if he worked with Chris. Oh, didn't he? I thought he did some of you guys. No? Yeah, he did, but Chris, yeah. Chris was but a Danny, who died. Yeah, 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 good. But um, I was, we had... Um, yeah. That's alright, I'm gonna call you to do that, I'm just gonna keep wandering around and one, two, three story tall. And it's quite a cool little place to wander in there. It's sort of a, a cross between a haunted house and a, a bit of Dan, that's right, Dan Patterson, also a very good sculptor. Yeah, so he moved, I think he's up in Ashburton. Yeah, 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 yeah sort of I, I've, I've sort of had a lot to do them over the years, but I haven't yeah. seen him for a few years, so. No. So I went, oh, that's right, I can't remember his name, it's popped out of the... <laughs> <laughs> cool, hey, thank you very much, no the good, friendly crew of Omaru Steampunk. Thank you. Thank you.